I'm Yasmin. Welcome to my jewelry design tutorials. I will show you now how to design a three stone ring in top view using the templates in Book 1 Jewelry Design Essentials. The top view shows the ring how it looks being worn. It focuses on the center or head of the ring. This view is great to quickly communicate the overall design without going into too much detail. In the template folder you can find this guide, which shows a hand and the position of the ring on the ring finger. This guide will help you to lay out the design. You do not need to trace the entire hand. A part of the finger or just the ring guide will work fine. Just in case you wonder why my guide looks larger in the video. I increased the size to make it easier for you to see all the details. But you should use the original guide to show the ring close to real size. Also, the stone sizes will be increased. Use smaller stones that you think will fit the design. This lesson is all about learning how to create the layout in general. The stone sizes and shapes depend on your design. Let's start. Tape a quarter sheet of vellum on top of the guide. Use both triangles to trace the ring guide. Check out lesson 1 to 3 to learn how to use the triangles. You can find the links in the description. Now the center stone. I use a princess cut. If you are new to designing jewelry, also use a princess cut to follow this lesson. The stone should not be too small or too large. Align the ring and stone. The cross shaped guides will help you to center the stone. Trace the stone using your triangles or freehand if you feel confident. Check if you traced all the parts of the gem. If the center stone has a simple claw or prong setting, we can add the side stones next. If there is metal between the center and side stones, as it would be in a bezel setting for example, we need to add the setting first. I am going to use tapered baguettes. As you can see on this guide, the baguettes look slightly different to baguettes in the top view. The crown on the outer edge appears thinner or is not visible at all. The reason is that in most three stone rings, the side stones are angled. Due to the distortion, we can only see part of the crown. The less we can see of the crown on the outer edge, the steeper the angle of the side stones. 
There are three columns on this template, so you can choose if the stone is more or less angled. Generally, the larger the center stone, the steeper the angle of the side stones. Choose a size that fits the design and center stone. Align the first side stone. The vertical guidelines will help you to keep the stone straight. The girdle of the baguette has to touch the girdle of the center stone. Trace the baguette. Repeat on the other side. white background. We do not need the templates anymore. As you can see, in this case the original ring guide is too wide to fit this design. It helped us to arrange the stones, but it is not suitable as a shank. Actually, in this case we will not see any part of the shank as the side stones go all the way to the edge. The top view alone is great to show certain design features, but it is limited. Certain parts we will just not be able to see. For this reason, it is a good idea to learn how to construct the side and end view. They will provide manufacturers and clients with all the information they need. Check the description for more information. Now the settings. The setting of the side stones is a hybrid between channel and prong setting. I will add the channel to the outer edge of the baguettes and round prongs to the corners near the center stone. This is a secure and traditional way to set these side stones. For the center stone we are going to use a prong setting. In this case, the prongs are not round, but V-shaped. These kind of prongs protect the corners of the stone very well. The ring design is finished. I go back now to the original ring guide and trace part of the finger. As I mentioned before, I could also trace the entire hand, but this depends on how you would like to display the design. shows construction lines. If you prefer to show the ring without them, you can tape another quarter sheet of vellum and trace the layout again. Of course, without construction lines this time. As this is the final layout and I would like it to be as precise and clean as possible, I am going to use the triangles to trace as much as I can. Small 
smaller parts, like some of the facet lines or prongs, are easier to trace freehand. In the beginning, take your time to trace everything. You will get faster with practice. There's also the option to trace the design on colored paper. There's a link to the video in the description. Here's the final tracing. I simplified the finger guide a bit. It's just two vertical straight lines in the same position as the finger. What looks really great is to add shading or even color to the design. Check out my first book, Jewelry Design Essentials, in this video to learn more. Mm -hmm.